Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the info session about the International Neuroscience MSc program at the Segura School of Neuroscience, Tel Aviv University. My name is Orly, and I'm the coordinator of this program. In this first part, we will present the university, the school, and the program. After that, you can ask us questions, and then we will hear a short lecture about some current research. So we're just going to jump right in. So uh, let's hear about Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv University from David Ryan, Global Outreach Coordinator from the Lowy International School, Tel Aviv University. Hi, David. Hi, Orly. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning or good evening, wherever you are. I'm delighted to be here. My name is David. I'm from the Lowy International School at Tel Aviv University. We're the hub for all of the international programs and international students and everything that happens globally. You may know us by our previous name. We were known as TAU International um, until December just last month and following um, a very generous donation, we've been renamed to the Lowy International School. So I'm going to begin by playing a short video. It's only, it's less than two minutes, just to, I think it encapsulates what it's like to study here at Tel Aviv University. Then I'll take about five minutes or so, just give you an overview of Tel Aviv University and the services that we offer and what's waiting here for you. Okay. Let's begin. Tel Aviv University International the only place in the world where you can study Taoism. What is Taoism? Well, it's a local philosophy that says the best way to study is through experience. Understand with your head, learn with your feet. The best way to study a multicultural society is to live in one. Be ready with your elevator pitch. You never know who you'll meet on campus. If you want to learn the best marketing strategies, just go to the local market. Reading about the Startup Nation? Write your own chapter. Study literature in the place that inspired the best seller of all time. You can't resolve a conflict until you witness one. At TAU, there is always room for more questions and 400 labs to find the answers. Come experience the wisdom of Taoism at Tel Aviv University International, where first-class education meets a second to none lifestyle. Bear with me. Okay. Okay, so I think, you know, it just sums up our philosophy here at TAU that, you know, you study best through experience. You heard it in the video, you learn with your head, you understand with your feet, and, you know, learning happens everywhere and sometimes, you know, when you least expect it. Um, so we call that Taoism. So when you come to us, you don't just learn in a classroom, in a lecture room, in a lab, you learn in a campus, in a city, in a country, all of these things will create this unique, wonderful um, learning experience for you. So I think this gives a good snapshot of Tel Aviv University. You know, we're Israel's largest and most comprehensive institution of higher education. We have nine faculties, 125 schools and departments, 400 labs. You know, we truly are a multidisciplinary institution of academic excellence. We have one campus, a big campus, 220 acres, just north of downtown Tel Aviv. Um, we have 30,000 total students, and of that, 2,000 are international, and they come from over 100 countries from all over the world. Typically, about 40 to 50 percent come from North America, but the rest come from all over the world, from Latin America, Europe, 
Asia, the, the Far East, Australia, as well as the international community um, here in Tel Aviv. You also heard in the film that, you know, we have 400 labs, 130 research institutions, uh, 3,500 projects annually. So we are Israel's largest and most comprehensive institution of higher education. So I won't go into all of them, but obviously we're very proud of our ranking and what we've achieved here at TAU. We're the number one choice for Israeli students. We're um, lots of rankings in entrepreneurship and other areas that you know we're, the, we're up there ranked with. Uh, we're the only non-US institution to be ranked in quite a few of these rankings. Um, number one choice for Israelis. And also 55% of the campus population is women. In 20, 2021, the university set up its very first Equality and Diversity Commission, headed up by Professor Netta Ziv, and their remit is clear. It's to enhance equality and diversity for everyone at TAU. So I mentioned that we're a big multidisciplinary institution of academic excellence with nine faculties. And, and that has a, you know, we have a vast range of research and teaching fields that create unique and fascinating connections between disciplines that are traditionally not connected to each other. And that alone provides infinite possibilities for academic creativity. We have world-class faculty and nine professors. They're here with you today to talk about this wonderful program. Um, every year, you know, our students perform over 300,000 hours of community service, students from 100 plus countries. And of course, if you come here, you get to enjoy the wonderful Mediterranean city of Tel Aviv um, that we call home. So if you've never been to Tel Aviv before, it's Israel's cultural and commercial capital. It's been called the capital of Mediterranean cool by the New York Times. It's a nonstop city with amazing nightlife, cuisine and cultures. It's a city you can never stop exploring. The slogan of the city is nonstop and the slogan here at the university at the international school is nonstop discovery. So it, it's a very wonderful city and lots of beaches and amazing food. It also has the world's third most sushi restaurants after Tokyo and London, if you like sushi. Okay, oh, bear with me. Oops. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from, uh, you know, the session today, in addition to the wonderful program that they'll talk about, it's the student life team. Um, they, are, they work for us. We call them uh, madrachim, which is a Hebrew word for guide or counsellor. And they're there very much to give you a nice soft landing. They're all Israeli students. They're all post-army. They're doing their first or second degree. And they, they work for us. They live in the dorms with you. They're there just to give you a nice soft landing. They're there on orientation day, on arrival day. They are your go-to people if you need any assistance or any help. 24 seven, if you need someone that speaks Hebrew because you've lost your bank card, they're available to do that. Anything here on campus, they're also available to assist. In addition to that, they'll, you know, you'll get to explore Israel through them. They do events on campus every week, like pizza night, yoga night, movie night, bringing students together, as well as amazing day trips and overnight trips in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, in the north and the south. So you really will get to explore um, the best of Israel has to offer. So they're there just to give you a sense of community and you very much, even though we have 2000 international students here, we get to know all of them pretty well. And that sense of um, community extends through to the accommodation as well. So we have obviously dorms on campus with 24 hour security. What we try and do is keep all of the international students together there, but at the same time, you're surrounded by Israeli students, so you get the best of both worlds. Um, the actual picture here is of the Broshim dorms just adjacent to campus. They're very nice. You can live in your own apartment there, a studio apartment or a one bedroom apartment. They all have their own kitchens. There's no meal plans, but there's a supermarket just literally um, at the entrance to the, to the dorms. And it's also a nice you know, way to, to, to make new friends is to bond over food as well and to cook together. Um, and just some pictures of the dorms here. You can see they're very nice. They all have their own kitchens, their own bathrooms, all en suite, all have Wi-Fi. You have laundry facilities. You have study rooms. You also have some social rooms. There's also a gym. There's also a creche there as well. So any students that do come with children, there, there's a place there for them. 
And I think just before I finish, I just want to briefly mention that um, even though you're all interested in the MSc in neuroscience, we do have over 60 programmes here taught in English, you know, from um, high school gap programmes all the way up to, to PhD and postdoc. So you literally can come to us and matriculate your entire way um, throughout your higher education journey. Um, and that's me. Thank you very much. I'll pop my email address into the chat. And if you do have any questions related to student life, scholarships, housing, anything at all that's non-academic, you know, I'd, I'm here to help and uh, I'd be happy to, to hear from you. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much Thank you so much, David, for all You're this welcome. information. And um, probably the, lots of the questions will come up later on and we can send it also to you and I can also try to help. Uh, for now, we're just going to move on, and I'm very happy to introduce Professor Dinora friedman Morvinsky and Dr. Boaz Brak, the academic heads of the program, who will tell us a bit about the Sagor School of Neuroscience and about the international MSc program. Please. Uh, Dino, we can't hear you. Now you can hear me. Yes. Uh, okay. So I guess you can introduce yourself, Boaz, and I'll continue with the presentation. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Boaz. I study autism and Williams syndrome. I'm a neurobiologist. Uh, I opened my lab five years ago, and I'm excited to head the program together with Dino. Um, and we're looking for your um, interest in the program, and we have a nice program that Dino will explain now about. Thank you. Uh, so as Bo said, my name is uh, Dinora Friedman Morvinsky. Uh, I'm, I'm studying cancer, I mean, brain cancer, and, and my lab was open, I think, six, seven years ago. Uh, as you can hear, maybe from my accents, I'm not an Israeli, I also came on a program from abroad I came actually for a master degree here in Israel, came from South America, from Uruguay. So now I know how it is to look for a program to come to different countries. So if you have any question about that, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, so as Boaz said, uh, we are co-leading uh, or co-heading this program. Uh, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, history or a little bit of background of what is the Gold School of Neuroscience and more specifically uh, on our program. So first about uh, what is you know, neuroscience? And, and I guess we can find many definitions of what is exactly and how to define it, but I, uh, we love here to pose actually mostly questions, right? So, you know, how the brain works, uh, where are and how are the memory stores, where are emotions? And uh, these are different questions that all our you know, research academy try to I understand to address. So these are only examples that all together, and I think uh, the main message today will be that our school, our program aims to interdisciplinary research, trying to reach uh, and combine completely different aspects and different ways to see neuroscience. So about the Sagol School of Neuroscience, it was established in 2011. And today, across campus, we have more than 150 laboratories that are affiliated to Sagol School of Neuroscience, among the, them from eight different faculties and 17 medical centers. One advantage of being here in Tel Aviv is that we are surrounded by very important medical centers, hospitals that can we collaborate with, and some of our research academic members are actually have their labs in these hospitals. Some are here in Tel Aviv on campus, but some are also located in these medical centers. And the, the school actually um, have a full educational studies in neuroscience in different degrees. We have undergrad, bachelor programs. We also have the master, the PhD and postdocs. Uh, currently, we have around 600 undergrad and grad students uh, at the school. Uh, of course, I, I want to convince you today that we are going, we are doing state-of-the-art uh, research in, in our school. Uh, we also house research centers. For example, one of them is called the uh, Mindicate, and we also have Mila. These are uh, different centers that maybe uh, 
later on I will uh, explain. And we won, and, and today we know that we are the leading neuroscience school in Israel at the moment. So uh, these are just a ranking just to show you where we are standing in terms of the neuroscience uh, in, in Israel. Sorry. So in terms of the uh, interdisciplinarity aspect, uh, we wanna see Sagol as a, a school that actually is a network that combines a lot of different disciplines. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, members, faculty members from medicine, from management, from life science, from humanities, social sciences, engineering, exact scientists. So everything comes from uh, different aspects and different uh, collaborations, of course, in this big network. Uh, we have mega centers for combating different brain disorders. These are a, this is a list of uh, some of the examples. We have experts that work on the uh, neurodegenerative diseases and some brain disorders that are listed in the slide. Moreover, uh, when we also some of our faculty members that are of course doing research in their lab. They also have uh, these translational aspects of the research and, and they have uh, established companies based on their findings. Um, we have some examples here of different professors that have opened startup and um, companies and are working in collaboration. Not only the faculty are doing that, but another thing that uh, also Sagol has is a big network with the industry. We have uh, collaborations with the uh, companies, pharmaceutical companies or instru instruments companies that actually uh, we work together in different projects to reach uh, different aspects of our uh, research. Publications in top journals, that's something that we aim. Excellence is something that we expect from the school, from our students. Uh, from our faculty members. So these are just you know, examples of uh, different uh, publications in different journals in the field of neuroscience. It's very broad. Uh, with the years, you can see that the, this, since the establishment of the uh, school, the number of publications are, are going up and up. And the publications, of course, go together with funding. Uh, our faculty members uh, are uh, ranked among the ones that got these uh, awarded uh, grants that are very big. That these are the largest individual competitive grants in Europe. And a large number of our faculty members got these very prestigious grants. So that supports uh, the research and that lead, of course, to very good and excellent publications. Uh, we mentioned also that we are very interdisciplinary, but we are also international. We host here in Tel Aviv and Sagol School several international conferences. These are just examples of the past uh, conferences that we hosted here. And so once you're here in Tel Aviv and you're part of Sagol, you will be exposed to all these international conferences and meetings that are uh, happening here uh, on campus. In terms of the academic programs, um, we have, of course, diverse undergrad and, and graduate programs in neuroscience. The ones that are listed here on the top are the undergrad programs. And specifically, in terms of uh, the graduate programs, we aim at interdisciplinary ones. And today, we're going to focus, of course, on the master's in neuroscience. But we also have a master in clinical neuroscience, PhD in neuroscience, and master in neuronal computational. Uh, computation. So some of them are only offered today in Hebrew, but we are aiming to move these international programs, uh, also, uh, sorry, these basic programs to international uh, program. So now focusing specifically on our uh, International Neuroscience Master Program. Um, the highlights of this program, of course, is to aim to expand your knowledge in specific neuroscience areas of research. Uh, well, at the same time, you'll be uh, you'll have access to pick from 150 laboratories that are all under the umbrella, or they're of course members affiliated, associated with Sagol School of Neuroscience. 
uh, you'll have, you know, on one hand, you will have, be exposed to research and, and writing a thesis. And at the same time, you will have a lot of uh, different classes, lessons, courses that you can choose. Some are mandatory, others are elective. Uh, you, of course, if you're accepted to the program, you will benefit from an enhanced living uh, scholarship that can support. I mean, with that, you can do whatever you want, either pay for your dorms or pay your living expenses. It's up to you. And also, you will have a full tuition uh, exemption. You will learn, you know, advanced quantitative methods in diverse areas led by world-renowned neuroscientists uh, that I have shown you some of them uh, before. And this is just a snapshot of what is the program, of course, but if you are interested in learning more, first of all, you can go to the website of the program uh, that I'm sure uh, Oli will, you know, post and keep posting as she's been doing very well recently and all the time. Uh, and, and of course, you can also, uh, if, if it's more on the academic side, you can reach Boaz and myself and we'll try to help you in any way uh, we can. So I guess only if, if they want any, or we can open the floor for, for questions uh, based on what you hear. Is this, if it's about Tel Aviv in general, if it's about the program itself, the so School of your Science, anything. Um, I think that a couple of more uh, uh, slides that we can go yeah. over about about the program itself. And ah, okay, yeah. Sorry, I thought I finished. Okay. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was before. Sorry, sorry. Okay. So yes, the <laughs> length of the program. program. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the end. Uh, the length of the program uh, is two years. Uh, of course, the official language is English, and the total credits that you need in terms of hours in the program is thirty semester hours. Uh, we'll go over this with you. We'll help you together with Boas if you want, or even, of course, if you uh, find a supervisor, which is, of course, uh, we encourage you to do that. Look and you know to all these laboratories that we uh, mentioned before. Try to pick a mentor, and then together with your supervisor, as well as Boas and myself, we can help you with you know, building your program in terms of courses and, and academic uh, selections. Uh, you, how do you find your supervisor? Uh, the best way to do it is to go to the website of Sagol. You have all the faculty members, different disciplines. You can reach to each person, I mean, to their website and learn uh, about their, what they do in, in each uh, lab. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you, you cannot get accepted without picking one. Of course, you can be accepted and then you can select your uh, supervisor or there is an option, uh, right, boss, that they can do rotations. Um, the, you can do a rotation if you, you know, look at the website, you're not 100% sure where to go or you're debating between two different, uh, you know, supervisors. An option is there for you to rotate through these labs uh, and we can discuss the details of how and what is the advantages and, and disadvantages of, of doing that and this is you know some images of you know the different labs in in, in our school so you can impress of different aspects different instrumentation different ways to to reach and in, or, or to investigate or to lab so in terms of the program, uh, what are the admission requirements? You need to have an average of 88 or above in your undergrad studies, either a bachelor in science or uh, other different uh, bachelor degrees that you pursue, either in your science, life science, psychology, or like I said, exact sciences, engineering, linguistic. We are very open and, and we will, of course, once you give us your uh, transcripts, we will find a way to correlate with these numbers that you see here uh, in terms of average. The most important thing today is the application deadline, right? It's uh, coming up uh, my March 23rd, uh, 2023. That's the deadline to submit all your full application. It's very, very important, uh, specifically if you want to reserve later on uh, an option for dorms, right? So you need to be accepted or in the process to be accepted, I mean, submitted and accepted 
we can give you a provisional acceptance letter, but to in, or, in order to reserve your dorm. So that is the problem. There is a very, very, uh, I would say very tight uh, period of time that you can do it. And that's why it's very important to, to send your applications on time. In terms of tuition, as I said, if you are accepted to the program, you will be exempt from uh, tuition payments. In terms of fellowships, I mentioned before, this is an amount of money that you will get per month and that you can decide to use for your living assistance and your personal use. It can go, as I said, either to pay for the dorms, a rental apartment, your living cost, anything. It goes directly to your bank account. Uh, and like I said, yes, there are Tao housing, as uh, we heard before and we saw, but the problem is that they're highly sick <laughs> and, 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 and you need to, to reserve them on time and with time. Um, what are the prerequisites in terms of mandatory courses that you need? Uh, they are listed here in this slide, and you will uh, you can you know later on. We have it also listed in our website. Uh, you have to have all these courses, and if you don't have them at the time of the interview, for example, that you because that's a process I will explain soon. Uh, once you're applying, we will you know uh, have an interview with you. It can be, of course, a virtual interview if you're on another place and not in Israel. And, and then through the period that we accept, or accept you provisioning, you have time to uh, complete the courses that you don't have today. If you haven't done it during your undergrad uh, degree, then uh, you can have, you can complete them. Uh, we have some uh, online courses that we can recommend. Uh, you can also send us the ones that you find and we will evaluate them and go through them and, and see if they are uh, elite, I mean, if they are the, on the standards that we require for the program. In terms of English, of course, English is a requirement and applicants that are coming from non-English speaking countries or are non-native speakers of English, they need to provide a proof of English uh, proficiency. And that proof will be evaluated by the office here uh, at Tel Aviv University. I can expand on this if, if you have questions, you know, during the Q and A's uh, time. Um, in order for your application to review, the following documents you need to submit uh, for in order to open what we call the online profile of yourself. Uh, of course, you have to go through the applications. There's a lot of questions. There's a form that you need to complete. And this application, once uh, you complete it, you need to pay an application fee of $150. Then you need to upload your CV. You need to upload the original transcripts in English, sign and stamp, as well as your undergrad uh, diploma. Uh, you need to send us two uh, academic recommendations plus email addresses of both the recommenders, I mean, the people that send these letters. Uh, we need to have their emails. Uh, of course, as I said before, English proficiency results, that's a proof of your uh, English. And uh, for the program, or at least for our program, we also ask for a PowerPoint presentation. And you can look at the uh, requirements of or the guidelines for this presentation online and this is for something that we need to go over with you during the the interview and I think uh, more or less I went through all the information uh, here again you have the email uh, of our program specifically for any questions that you might have and you have the website uh, where you can get all the information that I went through and even maybe with more details. And if you still have questions after going uh, through the website, of course, don't hesitate to contact us directly. And I think that's all right, Orly. I don't know if I missed something. <laughs> no, I, I think that's pretty much. Thank you very much, Dino. Perfect. So I'll stop uh, sharing and so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's open for questions. If anyone has questions, you can write in the chat or just open your mics and, and ask questions. Uh, if you feel, just, just feel free and ask us whatever you wish, and we will try to help you guys. 
So just, it's your time, uh, whatever you want. I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes. So if there's any questions, uh, Maria, yeah. Uh, hello, nice to meet you. Thanks for the information. I've, I have one question. Um, I know we have to do some mandatory courses. So my question is how much time do we have to complete them? Thanks. Um, okay, I think that Dino mentioned it. That mm -hmm. Once you get accepted, we go over all your transcripts and the, the, your academic background. And depending on your own academic background, we'll see if you need to complete any other courses. And if you do need to complete them, we'll send you a link to a specific course that you can just complete okay. online. And you will need to complete it before the beginning of the program. So the, the interviews will be around April and the program will start on October. So you'll have enough time and every year it's okay. Like sometimes you have to complete one course and sometimes you have to complete more courses. But even if I, we had one example with a lot of courses that uh, they needed to complete, it's enough time and you can do it in your own time. It is definitely manageable. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Welcome. Any other questions? Feel free. You can also. Yes. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying they can ask in the chat if they are shy. <laughs> hey, Sophia. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so I'm still a third year bachelor student, so I don't have my diploma yet. Can I, how do I apply then with my current uh, transcript of records or how does it work? You are definitely correct. <laughs> you can apply with the status that you have until now and it will be on probation. Uh, you will have to finish your degree with all your courses and to meet the academic, you know, the, the grades that we are looking for, 88 and above in the Israeli scale. So you can get accepted to the program, but until the beginning of the program in October, you will have to submit the final transcripts and, and to see that you can actually start the program. But definitely third years undergrads can be accepted to the program. Okay, so that means that uh, my final grades matter, not the grades that I apply with right now, like the GPA. You will apply with everything that you have until now. And then if it's it looks okay, so we can summon you for an interview. And if everything goes by the plan and you, you can get accepted, it, you know, we are looking for 88 and above. So if your transcripts, for example, are 60 or 70, the chances of you to getting to 88 and above are very low. But if it's, if it's close to 88 from, you know, up or a bit less, so it, it looks okay. So we, we have sometimes cases like that, definitely. But eventually your, you know, your total grade of your undergrad has to be 88 and above. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Welcome. So, so focus on your studies. <laughs> Definitely. I will. <laughs> Any other questions? And also you can write in the chat and you can just open the mic if you if something is not clear. Um, can, is it possible to see a conversion of how international grades are um, counted? Like because it depends a lot on the country, I guess. Um, it's a good question, and on the website, like on, you know, when you look in the web, there's different like tables that you can see that. In the Tel Aviv University, we have a specific unit that handles that, uh, that we transfer, like once you pay the, the application fee, the $150, and once you upload all your, documenting, your documents, so then we transfer all your uh, um, transcripts to that unit. And they are dealing with transferring from whichever country that you're coming from to the Israeli scale. So I, I can't answer you more than that. You can find more information in, in, in the web because it's pretty much the same. But in every university, they, they do have a specific table that, like, that they use. So I, I, I think that I just will recommend you to send your documents and I can send it to them and they will check it out. Thank you. Welcome.
anything else that we can maybe help you guys. Okay, you can keep on sending us questions by email or in the chat and we will answer it anyway. Um, now we will uh, keep on going because we promised you just a glimpse of science. So uh, let's get a glimpse of some current research from Shir Mandelba, our PhD student. Shir, the stage is yours. Thank you. Let me share the screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Great. So hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Shir Mendelbaum and I'm a PhD student from the lab of Ornel Roy Stein in Segal School of Neuroscience here at Tel Aviv University. And I'm very honored to be selected to talk here today in front of you and to present my research. When I started preparing this presentation, I realized that I've been a part of Segal School family for the past 10 years. I started my bachelor's degree here at 2013, majoring biology and psychology. I finished in 2016 and moved on to a direct PhD program and joined the lab of Ornel Rolstein. So let's talk about exciting things. Have you ever wondered what allows humans to think such complex thoughts? So for the past two centuries, neuroscientists have been largely focusing on neurons and ignoring the rest of the cell types in the central nervous systems system that are called glial cells. Glial cells are composed of astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, and microglia, and they got their name from the word glue because they were once thought to be the glue that holds the structure of the brain together. Today, we know that this is far from the truth. In fact, if you ask me what is the most interesting cell type in the central nervous system, I will tell you it's astrocytes. And, and let me explain. So first of all, astrocytic complexity distinguishes the human brain. Throughout evolution, neurons haven't changed much. They did change in size. So if you compare the neuron from a mouse to a neuron of a human, you will see that it increased one and a half times in size. With astrocytes, the story is different. Here, you can see a protoplasmic astrocyte of a mouse. You can see a relatively small cell body and very long and narrow extensions that we call processes. These processes engulf synapses and support them. Here is the protoplasmic astrocyte of a human. It is not only bigger, 2.6 fold bigger, it is also more complex. It has 10 fold more processes and it has functions that the mouse astrocytes does not have. In fact, humans have um, several subtypes of astrocytes that other organisms don't have. And we know today that um, the more intelligent the organism is, the more complex are the astrocytes. So this is only part of the reasons why I decided to dedicate my PhD and possibly my entire career to study this um, fascinating cell type. About my research, so I joined a lab um, which studies uh, molecular biology and more specifically gene expression. Um, very briefly, for a gene to be expressed, um, an RNA molecule has to be transcribed based on the DNA molecule that resides within the cell nucleus. There are many different types of RNA molecules, and today I will talk about mRNA, messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA travels outside of the cell nucleus, and then it is being translated into protein. Why do we need proteins in the cell? because proteins are the cellular entities that can do things. For example, if the cells need energy, then they can express a certain array of proteins that can produce energy if you give them glucose and oxygen. And this is just one example. Proteins can do basically uh, all the things we need to survive. So the process of um, protein synthesis is mediated by a cellular entities that at, entity that is called the ribosome. The ribosome is composed of a large subunit and a small subunit, and it is made of ribosomal RNA and ribosomal proteins. It will sit 
on the mRNA molecule and read through it, and then it can translate it into protein based on the genetic information that is encoded within this mRNA molecule. Here is an illustration of a ribosome that is translating a yellow mRNA molecule into a pink protein. But the process of protein synthesis can be even more efficient. The same mRNA molecule can be simultaneously translated by many different ribosomes in a huge and very heavy structure that is called a polyribosome. We have a very common method uh, in my field to study ribosomes and polysomes and translation, and this method is called polysome profiling. What we do is we collect all the cells um, into a tiny little ball that we call a pellet. We extract the RNA and ribosomes from this pellet of cells, and we separate the components according to their size and weight. So on the top of the tube, we have very light particles, and in the bottom, we have very heavy particles, such as polyribosomes. Then we quantify um, the components in this tube, and we can see how much we have of each component. So for example, we can see the small and large subunits of the ribosome, the full uh, intact ribosome, which we also call a monosome. And then we can see this very uh, unique shaped peak of polyribosomes. This is a very common method that allows us to take the mRNA that was bound here by polyribosomes and sequence it in order to tell which, what are the proteins that were synthesized um, by the cell. And this is how we can ask what were the plans of the cells? What plans were the cell, was the cells uh, executing? So what I wanted to do in my PhD is to first um, perform polysome profiling on astrocytes. I took some cells, I uh, collected them into a pellet, and I got the following profile. I got the small subunit, large subunit, and ribosomes, but I couldn't find any polyribosomes. I took more cells and repeated the process again and again, and I couldn't find any polyribosomes. So I went to the literature and I searched for scientists, labs, papers that did this already because astrocytes are being studied for extensively for the past 10 years, let's say. And polysome profiling is a very common method, but I couldn't find anyone that did it. And this was very weird. So this is when we hypothesized either astrocytes do not have polyribosomes or there is something wrong with the method currently, and it is not really adapted to astrocytes. In order to answer this question, we took images with electron microscopy, uh, which is a, a microscope that allows a very high magnification, and you can actually see ribosomes and polysomes. And this is the images. You can see in the blue arrows um, a type of polyribosomes, of polyribosome that is composed from five ribosomes. And they also have uh, longer polyribosomes, but the bottom line is that they have many, many polyribosomes. So why can't we see them? And I took it upon myself to optimize the method for polysome profiling. Um, and I did it for a few years. I changed several things. One of them was the um, surface area to volume. Um, component instead of collecting the cells into a ball like most people do. Uh, I decided to collect the RNA from the cells when they are still open and uh, flat on the plate and this way I could increase the efficiency of a uh, ribosome extraction. Finally, I got polyribosomes and then I was uh, uh, able to use this method in order to study astrocytes. So what did I do? Um, I took cells and I treated them with cytokines, which is a treatment that mimics um, a disease in the brain or brain injury or viral infection in the brain. So we have, let's say we have a resting astrocytes, not treated, and the one that is treated with cytokines. And first of all, I uh, did polysome profiling and I saw that the activated, the treated astrocytes here in red have more polyribosomes and more ribosomes. And this is not a trivial result. First of all, it was never shown. 
because the method was not appropriate, but um, it's not so trivial. Many different cell types decrease translation upon stress, upon, you know, when something happens, they shut down translation to save energy. Astrocytes act the opposite. They want um, to proliferate in order to solve the problem. Um, and it is something that is known about astrocytes that they do have this uh, role of maintaining homeostasis when something goes wrong in the brain. Um, but even more interesting, I was able to take uh, those, um, those polyribosomes and sequence the mRNAs that they were translating. And this is how I could ask what plans are currently uh, being executed. And since this is a very brief talk, I'm not gonna go into all the details and everything we found, but basically we found that uh, they increased the efficiency of translation of genes involved in ribogenesis, the generation of new ribosomes, energy production, and cholesterol, which was very surprising. And when we thought about it, we realized that cholesterol is a, a component of the cellular membrane and those cells needs to generate a lot of membranes when they're activated. Uh, so everything uh, made a lot of sense. Uh, and the bottom line is that now there is a better way to um, study protein synthesis in astrocytes. Um, so this is my uh, professor, Orlan Roystein, and my lab members. Um, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much here. <laughs> it's very interesting to hear also about the, the challenges that you have throughout your research. And as you said, you are part of this Gold family and hopefully for many more years. <laughs> um, okay, so guys, uh, if there's any more questions, feel free. Uh, you can write us. Um, this is a good time to thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, David, Dino, Boaz, Shil, uh, for sharing all the information. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, we talked about it before. Um, I, can you just stop sh the sharing, Shir? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so just a quick reminder about uh, um, uh, the registration. We, we just want to remind you all that the, the registration for the program will close on March 23rd. So don't wait for last minute. Uh, we are here until March 23rd. Uh, make sure that to upload all your documents before that uh, uh, date. Um, you're more than welcome, of course, to contact me directly. You, all of you guys have my emails. It's on the website. You have the email, the program's uh, email. You can write me any question that you have. I will be happy to assist you. Um, and that's it. The, I think that we just want to say to all of you guys around the globe that we really hope to see you next year in Tel Aviv. So good luck, everyone, and take care. <laughs>